Welcome to this AQA GCSE Sociology Revision Blast. Today we're focusing on family forms, which is part of paper one. We're going to start off the Revision Blast today with a round of conundrums. The letters of each family type have been rearranged. You have 30 seconds to solve each conundrum. Off we go. Okay, did you work this one out? It is a nuclear family, which has been seen as the ideal type of family in Britain, and it consists of two generations, male and female parents and their children, either their own or adopted, and has been presented as both the best and normal type of family, when actually it is only one of many different family types, which we're going to see in the rest of this um, round of conundrums. Tip number two. Okay, let's reveal. It is lone parents. So a lone parent family are just one parent, either mother or father, with their dependent children. And they are on the increase in Britain. About 25% of families with dependent children are lone parent families. And about 90% of those are headed by female. So previously, lone parent families were mainly down to the death of one parent or separation where one partner left. Although this would have been frowned upon at the time, but there are now more lone parent families today, which are either the result of divorce or the end of a relationship, or women simply choosing to have children on their own. Okay, number three. Right, let's reveal. It is single sex families. So these are also known as same sex families and they are on the increase in the UK consisting of a couple of the same sex who might be living together or in a civil partnership or since 2014 married. So the Marriage Act or Same Sex Couples Act in 2013 allows same sex couples to marry in civil ceremonies and same sex couples in the UK also have the right to adopt which they've had since 2002 following the Adoption and Children Act of that year. Right number four. Let's reveal this one. It is blended, also known as reconstituted families, and this is the result of two families coming together following a divorce or separation where one or both parents meets a new partner, and they are more commonly referred to as step families. Right, we've got one more conundrum. Okay, we have our extended families here. So many people in the UK live in extended families 
um, and it consists of relatives as well as the immediate family. So it can be vertically extended where you've got three or more generations living together or very nearby, so children, parents and grandparents, or it could be horizontally extended where you've got two generations with relatives other than the immediate family living together or nearby, so cousins, aunts and uncles, for example. Right, we're going to move on to some true or false statements now. So our first one is, nuclear families are the most common family form in the UK today. Is this true or false? We'll leave it up for a moment for you to have a think about. Do you think this is correct? Let's reveal the answer. It is false. Okay, number two. Lone parent families account for one quarter of all UK families. Is this true or false? Let's reveal. It is true. Number three. Same-sex couples do not have the same rights in terms of adoption as other family forms. True or false? Let's reveal. It is a false. So they do have the same rights now and have done for the last two decades. Number four, there are now more reconstituted families in the UK than nuclear families. Is this true or false? Let's have a look. It is true. So more step families than nuclear families. And finally, for true or false, extended families all have to live under the same roof. Is this true or false? Let's reveal. It is false. Well done if you got all of those correct. Right, we're going to move on to an on balance activity looking at the advantages and disadvantages of, disadvantages of polygamy. So let's just remind ourselves what this term means. So polygamy refers to a marriage where one partner is allowed to legally marry several partners at the same time. And it is most common for a man to have several wives. The practice is found in many smaller traditional societies, particularly in Northern Africa and Middle East. But it is only usually wealthy men who practice it as they need to be rich enough to support all of their wives. Women in these societies often regard the practice as unfair, but in such patriarchal systems, they are unlikely to have much choice in the matter. It is also thought to exist widely in Utah in the US through the Mormon faith, although this is much less common now. You also have the term polyandry here, which is a custom where women may marry several men at the same time. So it's a form of polygamy, although it does seem to be quite rare and it might have been a custom in societies where there was a shortage of men. In some areas in Nepal, for example, it is the custom for women to marry all the brothers from one family, even if the brothers are very young. And wives are expected not to show any favouritism at all and have at least one child from each father. So in comparison in the UK, we practice monogamy, where UK law states that men and women can only have one marriage partner at a time, and the church encourages this to be for life. However, serial monogamy is becoming more common. If you have more than one marriage partner at any one time, you are committing bigamy, which is illegal. So let's have a look at some of the advantages and disadvantages. So what we would like you to do is pause the video for a few moments to note down two advantages of polygamy. So if you can pause the video for a couple of moments to give yourself a little bit more time to note down some advantages, when you're ready, unpause and we will re reveal some answers. Okay, let's have a look at some of the advantages of this practice. Firstly, more, more money as there are more people in work. So the death of the parent, for example, is likely to is less likely to result in poverty. We also have all women taking care of all children. So childcare is not a problem and common household tasks are spread amongst more people. What we're looking for this time is two disadvantages. So again, can you pause the video and note down two negative aspects of this practice when you're ready? restart and we'll reveal the answers. Okay, if you haven't paused, can you please do that now because we are about to reveal. Let's have a look at some of the disadvantages. So some people see it as unnatural, so particularly in countries like the UK, we see having more, more wives or husbands as something that shouldn't happen. 
And in some cultures, the younger wives are servants to the oldest wife. And there can be quite a lot of jealousy between the wives as well. So well done if you got those. OK, we're going to move on to a round of altered vows. Now, we're going to focus on this round on um, work by the Rappaport. So in the 1980s, sociologists, uh, sociologists Rona and Robert Rappaport put forward the ideas that families were becoming more diverse in contemporary UK. And they were moving away from one family form. Um, and the nuclear family was one of many different types. Some of the ways in which the families are becoming more diverse is how they're organised in terms of structure, in the different roles between men and women and in kinship patterns. So, for example, some families are lone parent while some families are extended. And trends such as divorce, remarriage and cohabitation have made family structures much more unpredictable and they no longer follow set patterns. So the Rappaport recognise five forms of diversity. Now, what you need to do is you need to work out what they are with this altered vowels activity. So each key phrase shown has had the vowels changed an alternative. Can you work them out? OK, our first one is on the screen now. We'll just give you a moment to think about this one before we reveal. If you need a little bit more time, then please pause the video. Let's reveal. It is organisational. Now, we'll talk about what this all means in the next activity. Number two. This one perhaps is a little bit easier. OK, let's reveal. It is life course. Number three. Nice and easy, hopefully, this one. It is, of course, class. Number four, let's reveal, it is cohort. And number five, okay, which one are we missing? Let's reveal the answer. It is cultural or ethnic. Well done if you got those correct. So let's have a look at what this means in our next activity. We're going to do a connection spinner activity looking at family diversity. So we want to think about how each of these things affects diversity across the family. And our spinner is going to land on organisational. So I'm just going to give you a minute. You Again, you might want to pause the video to think about how organisational affects diversity amongst families. What does organisational diversity actually mean? If you haven't paused, please do so now because we are about to reveal. Have a look. So it's talking about the different type of family structure. So whether your family is a single parent family or it's reconstituted, it also looks at different kinship patterns and how domestic how domestic labour is divided between partners. So is it the mother doing everything or is it balanced between male and female or, or whoever you've got in your household? Right, let's do one more. OK, so we've landed on cohort. Again, can you pause the video for a few moments? Think about how cohort affects diversity. Or what does diversity between cohorts actually look like? OK, let's reveal the answer here. So when we're talking about cohort, we mean people that were born at the same time. So they might have a shared experience of historical events. So, for example, we might be talking about the introduction of comprehensive schools here. So when this happened, we suddenly saw girls getting the same sort of qualifications as boys, which meant their career prospects were better. So therefore, we ended up, you know, a generation later, seeing less women working as housewives and actually going out physically going out to work. If we think about the induction, introduction of the birth control pill in the 1960s, this meant that families had much more control over the number of children they had. So therefore, it had an impact on the diversity of the family. Right, we're not going to spin it anymore, but let's just have a look at the other three that we haven't discussed. So we've got life course here. So it's the life course of individuals within families can vary greatly. 
This can reflect choice or circumstance and it covers factors such as the number of children you might choose to have, the spacing of children, uh, divorce, remarriage, widowhood, all sorts of things there. If we look at class, we're talking about wealth and income and how they have an obvious impact in terms of the type of housing, the room size, the number of rooms, and whether people have financial problems or whether you can access things like holidays. And then if we consider cultural and ethnic diversity amongst families, Britain is a really multicultural and ethnic society. So people from ethnic backgrounds who have migrated to the UK might actually follow the customs and norms of the culture of their ethnic group and religion in terms of marriage and kinship. However, their children who have been born in the UK might meet up with alternative practices at school, in their neighbourhoods and in the media, and they might combine practices from both cultures where they form their families. So, for example, South Asian families tend to be extended and they tend to be traditional and patriarchal. They have much lower rates of separation and divorce and are more likely to keep ties with the extended family. But younger British born members of this group are starting to buck the trend. Right, we're going to move on to another on balance activity. This time we're looking at arranged marriage. So arranged marriage is something that we do see in this country. And again, it does tend to be amongst South Asian families more than any other group. Um, it is all about families choosing your your marriage partners. Now, it is different from forced marriage. So we quite often get modelled up between these. Forced marriage, you have no say over who you're marrying, um, whereas arranged marriage, you do. So although your parents arrange it, you do have the right to say, no, I don't want to be involved in this. So let's think about the pros and cons of arranged marriage. So pause the video, think about a couple of advantages of having your family arrange your marriage for you. Once you're ready, restart the video and we will reveal some advantages. Okay, let's have a look at what you could have noted down. So parents firstly choose very carefully for their children. It often tends to be um, from families with the same sort of social standing. And as a result, divorce amongst arranged marriages is quite rare. Let's have a think about the disadvantages of this type of marriage. So again, pause the video. Note down a couple of disadvantages. And then when you're ready, pop the video back on and we'll see what you've come up with. Okay, are we ready to reveal the disadvantages? Let's have a look. So you might not actually like who your parents choose, although you can reject their choice. There are some people who may find that actually they don't want to disappoint their parents though, so they end up being married to someone they don't really like very much. And you don't know your partner, which can be extremely awkward. Certainly when you're, um, you know, you're, arraying, you're involved in this great big wedding, you're marrying someone very publicly and actually you don't really know them very well. So that can be quite overwhelming. Right, well done for getting to the end of the revision blast. So we've covered a variety of activities looking at different family forms ready for paper one. Hopefully that's going to make you go into that exam feeling much more confident. And if you haven't already seen, we have got lots and lots of different revision blasts in the playlist that cover the entire topic. So please have a look at them. And obviously we would like to wish you heaps of luck for those two exam papers. Good luck.